Hello friends, Tal here. Welcome to another quick guide here in the Overwatch beta. Today we will be looking at Torbjorn, the dwarf, but not really. He's just a short Swedish man, Swedish man according to him. Um, I have a lot to say about him. Most of it is not positive, but let's go ahead and get into the, the exact details of how he plays, how he works. This is a quick guide, so I'm going to focus on that, not make it a soap op, a soap op, uh, soap op, soapbox jesus words are difficult anyways he is a defensive hero he builds a turret that gets play of the game and makes everyone else look like shit uh he can create armor packs for his ally and his molten core ultimate increases the turret um the turret's output it gives rocket to the turret and makes you have a lot of ammo and increased fire rate now uh, it's called molten core, core molten core he turns big red fiery orange kind of like ragnaros uh, but essentially he becomes a lot more difficult to kill he has uh, becomes very deadly he himself because his fire rate is so so much faster and he can actually just switch to his hammer and just hammer you down to death um, he throws out little armor packs that give people a power up uh, in their health it's about 50 health and it's resistant to damage you can just kind of throw that out give it to your entire team your shift ability is to build a turret uh, your gun you have two different weapons your rivet gun your left click is like a slow shot that it kind of shoots out it does have a drop off and then your right click is like a shotgun just explosion in front of you uh, you have a secondary uh, weapon, which is your forge hammer that you can actually switch to, and you can just swing it. Excuse me. Sorry about that, I had sneeze. Uh, anyways, you swing the hammer, and you can either improve your turret or give your turret health, or you can actually damage an enemy with it. And if you molten core and use the hammer, it actually does a pretty funny amount of damage. Uh, and then his passive is he actually collects scraps. As you kill enemies, or as enemies die, they drop these little scraps, or you're going to see them when I'm killing these robots. You collect them, and you use them for the armor packs. Now, uh, his melee is just kind of uh, whatever the hell is going on with his arm over there. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So his primary fire is a little bolt. It does a decent amount of damage. It's not too bad, not too shabby. It has a drop-off, if you see there. Uh, this is actually kind of a deadly weapon. I mean, two headshots will just murder someone, and the shotgun blast is respectable. You see right there the little um, armor packs. Not the armor packs, but the scrap that he can collect. Let's go ahead and kill this. There's the scrap. You walk over to it, just floats over to you, and then you can use your secondary ability, which is the armor pack. You pick it up, get some extra health. You cannot pick up multiple, but you can just kind of throw it out and give your entire team a little boost in health. Okay. Then he has his little hammer. Boom, boom, boom. Three hammers. I wonder if I can get a headshot. Let's let's actually try this. I'm gonna try to get a headshot with a, a hammer. Let's see what happens. I don't think it actually does anything. Anyways, so that's that's his base kit. Now we're gonna talk about the turret. His turret is the shift ability. When you place it down kind of builds itself up it automatically targets someone with the blue laser beam it's kind of slow it takes a couple of seconds to finally target someone and then he starts shooting so you see there level one turn is not that much combined with you it can do a decent amount of damage but level one turn is what you're building it for you're going to build it up you're going to switch to your forge hammer and then you just start hammering away if you see here on the bottom left you're going to see the health of the turn and then the upgrade level it is now level two now it is going to be very annoying terror that just starts murdering everything around you after it locks on and then when we use our ultimate it is going to make us do a lot more damage but also upgrade our turn to level three we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this right now our turn gets rocket launchers starts doing a bunch of damage it gets all cool and we are actually able to heal it up very quickly with our increased attack speed now what this means is that if the enemy is focusing down your turret it's losing health you don't want it to die you just start hammering away and you let it do all the work for you now put that there and let it just sit there because I'm gonna go ahead and change that out so that is his turret now I want to show what his attack speed becomes when you start going into Molten Core because Molten Core doesn't just buff your turret, it buffs you as well. 
see here the increased fire rate does a lot does a lot of damage there when you just have the increased fire rate you have the shotgun shelling and then of course you can switch over to your forge hammer as soon as something spawns and just do a lot of basic attacks so with all of that being said Torbjorn is a character that is monumentally absolutely positively frustrating to play against I don't think I'm the only person that would say that he absolutely hates playing against the Torbjorn. The turret has gone through a lot of changes, mostly nerfs at this point, uh, making its AI not as easily able to murder everything. As you see in the background, it's just killing everything. The turret is a giant pain in the butt to go up against. You want to put it down in places that are a uh, chokehold or where it can easily access enemies and be relatively safe so that it's not taking as much damage. If you see here from this position forget that wall but it's it has a pretty long range it's just shooting that down just you know getting kills away um, it can very easily wipe an enemy team but overall it's just a very annoying thing to go up against I'm gonna go ahead and switch over here just start doing damage to it it only goes up to level 3 if you've ta if you've upgraded it up to level 2 as you see there on the bottom left it's only a level 1 still because I haven't upgraded it but if I come over here and just smack it a couple times, make it level two, blah blah blah. Or actually, let me go ahead and build it here. I, I want it. I want it down here. So I want to show all of its range. I want to see if it'll reach all these other people. There you go, level two. So if you make your turn do all the work, it's very likely the enemy team is just gonna find find where it is and you know destroy it. It's gonna be done. But if you work in tangent with your turret, you can get a lot of a lot of stuff done. See there, level three, it's doing damage to all that down there. Doing damage on this side. It's very powerful. It's very, very powerful. Now. So that's basically how you play him. Um, he is a trolley character in my opinion. It's very easy to frustrate an enemy team, especially newer players are going to have a hard time going up against Torbjorn, but more experienced players have an easy time. Genji can easily deflect all the turn shots back at it, uh, mostly to destroy it. Uh, he is able to keep it up with the hammer, of course, and Molten Core. Um, overall, though, personally speaking, I wish that they hadn't included Torbjorn. I get wanting to have a sort of turret hero. Uh, outside of Bastion, one that it's you just kind of set it up and forget it. But it feels like it's either the turret is overpowered constantly or nerfed into obscurity. It's pretty easy to get around the turret once you've once you're experienced, you know how the characters work, you know how to counter it. It's pretty easy to counter it, which then makes it kind of seem dumb to have it in the game if it's so easy to counter. But then when they buff it, they make it so strong that even experienced players are just frustrated beyond belief playing against the Torbjorn. Um, I don't know what the right answer is. I wish he didn't exist because it, it can be very frustrating to go up against this. But that's why you can switch heroes. You can adjust to different situations. And uh, you want to go ahead and counter him. Farah's a good counter. Genji's a good counter. You just have to be careful for when multi core is coming up. And if it gets used against you, it's going to be very difficult to kill the turn when he is just standing here hammering away at this. And he has a bunch of health. Look at him. He has 575 health when he's in multi core. If he's just hammering away at this, you're not going to get this killed. You, you're really just not. But yeah, I mean, Torbjorn can be a fun, I guess, when your turn out kills every single member of your team. Just gets kill after kill after kill. But uh, yeah, he's a turn hero. He's a defensive hero. You definitely want to set it up in good spots where it's just going to frustrate the enemy team. And to counter him, you want to get around him or you just want to kill him. Because the turn is a pain. But anyways... That has been my first, uh, my quick guide look at Torbjorn here in the Overwatch beta. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did like this video, please throw me a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments section if you have any ideas, suggestions for anything that I'm doing. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful day.